Um, well, look, guys, we, we've got we've got one more guest coming to join us tonight. But I've got to tell you, we need to be a bit quiet when they come in. So no music, Reggie, and, and everyone. We, 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 we've got to be very respectful and very, very quiet because uh, our next guest is a real treat. And uh, here, from the world-famous San Diego Zoo, along with a few of his friends, please welcome the zookeeper, Rick Schwartz. <laughs> Here he comes. Hey, guys. <laughs> Figured you're doing a, a late show, right? Oh, come and sit down. Come and have a seat. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. How, How are, are you, Rick? Doing Thank well. you for being Thank you here. for having us. Now, who's this that we've got here? Uh, this is Hagrid. And Hagrid is one of the largest owls you'll find in the world. It's an eagle owl. Right. And right now, uh, Hagrid's feathers are down a bit. But they do have similar characteristics to the great horned owl we have here in the US, actually, all throughout the world. Tommy's face just went. To, I think Tommy. Hello, Tommy. I think Tommy might be thinking, "Is this a trip from some acid I took in 1956?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am wondering. <laughs> how are they able to turn their heads? It's pretty cool because we look at the body here. It looks like it's just swiveling in place, right? Yeah. So as they turn, the uh, all the, the basically the the brain stem, all the stuff for the blood vessels, everything else can go without being pinched because they're in these little grooves in the neck. Now, they can't do a full circle around. That's just a myth. They can go about even with the spine on this side, and they have to stop and come back around that way. Very important to be able to uh, do that. Know, there you go. Right now you can see the owl. Right on cue. Oh, Edward, you're crushing it tonight. <laughs> so essentially, yeah, very well trained. I'm a great animal trainer. I totally yeah. trained that on cue, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the reality is, though, that's very important for me because, again, the eyes are so big, there's no room for ocular muscles. So we can move our eyes around inside our head. They cannot do that, so they rely on that. Ah, their eyes can only look forward. Right, right. OK, well, look. Uh, Rick has also brought some other friends. I do have some more. Let's give me real quick. I hand off so here. Let's hand Hagrid there away. Go. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Everyone, shh. Very quiet. Look at that. Oh my God. All right. How fitting to have Australian. <laughs> Are you from Australia? Yes. Oh, well, this is very boring for you then. Might as well sure. bring a, a rabbit in here for everybody look. else. All right. Would you like to uh, hold the baby? It's not going to hurt you. What do, well, what do you... I mean, I would have said yes before the owl, here, here. but you know. There you go. Just like oh that. Oh my god! And if you look, <gasps> oh my. So this is an eleven-month-old uh, red kangaroo. What about the pouch? What about the pouch? That's a great question. Why did they develop those? So that's what's cool. Everyone thinks mar all marsupials have pouches, but it's not true. Only the females have pouches, not the ah. boys. The pouch is where the baby develops. Like I said, when, when uh, Cassidy here was, only, was first born about the size of a jelly bean, had to crawl from the birth canal into the pouch, latches on there, and then spend the next three to four months not even coming out of the pouch, developing in there. It's a unique thing for marsupials that the majority of the development actually happens outside of the womb. Other mammals we seem to tend to see the majority of development happening in the womb. So it's a very unique thing for marsupials. Now, is it true that kangaroos are brilliant boxers? That, yeah, you know what, it's funny. <laughs> People do have that idea, and when, when the males do fight, they'll rear up, they'll use this big, thick tail here as a kickstand. No, sometimes they have gloves. No. <laughs> no, you know what I'm talking about, the Reggie, cartoons. Right? Those are the cartoons. Oh, that's not real. <laughs> not it's real not based on anything real Nobody when they have actual to... boxing gloves. That's right. on the three okay. stages with shampoo. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, Let's say goodbye to Joey, shall we? Right. Here we go. We'll oh. pass off Cassidy here. Cassidy, now, we're going to have to play a little musical chairs. Okay. I'm going to need everyone to shift this way, and I'm going to okay. end up over here. Okay, come on, Tommy. And I'm going to need some help with this, so stay seated. Okay, Ready? Tommy, you come in here. Jess, oh come down. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh God. No. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Jess, come in. I'm not a snake. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. No one want to fill this seat? No. Yeah, I'm, coming. I'm coming in. All right. I'm good back here. No, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Jess, I'm, Jeff, you okay? Yes, yes. You're all right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. The worst this snake will do is hug you. So. Yeah, really hard until you die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they call it hugging. I think they call it prep for lunch, it's, no? Yes, yeah, softening the food. So this is a Burmese python. Uh, <laughs> roughly about 90 pounds and, you know, clearly very long. I can very physically to feel Tommy shaking. <laughs> <laughs> His whole body's going like this. Are you... You're not a snake guy, Tommy, no? Mm, no, I'm not. Not... Not particularly fond of snakes. And Jess, you, you're, you're, you look really oh, frightened. No. 
don't like She me. just wanted a nice, she wanted to look good for TV up there. It's a good <laughs> scene. So. Now, how, so yeah, if, if this, what's the snake's name? Julius Squeezer. Julius Squeezer. <laughs> yes. Most That's appropriate. Confident. Yeah. If, Julius Squeezer. If Julius Squeezer, how long would it take Julius Squeezer to kill Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> The odds are you'd have to be already somewhat subdued for a snake the size to get you. You have to be under the influence of something to not be able to, you know, help yourself. Uh, essentially, the snakes aren't really that strong if you start at the tail and start uncoiling them. You know, a human adult can manage that with no problem. It's if you're already knocked out or something okay. happened to you. you feel I feel, now, feel, a, lot you feel a lot now. better now. But see, yeah. as I said, even <laughs> if, even if Tommy somehow fell down on the ground and the snake said, I'm going to squeeze you, and that all happens, they'd never even be able to eat you. Are you a snake guy, Jeff? No. Um, not really. I had a book when I was a kid. I was fascinated with him, but this is the first time I've ever been in contact with a snake. It's so so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, look. Well, look finally, beautiful. finally, your python, your python, and this one are face to face. Look at that. <laughs> oh. that's, that's really, look, he's really <laughs> straddling the whole of Goblin there. <laughs> you see, that's why you're so at ease. You're used to a 15 foot python just hanging on your crotch. <laughs> <laughs> It's a beautiful animal. Uh, Rick Schwartz, everybody, thank you so much My for bringing pleasure. your My animals pleasure. down. Yes. We're going to be right back after this break. Don't go anywhere. Wow, very trippy. Very trippy. <laughs> <laughs>